Hello all, welcome back. So a lot of you guys have been asking me, how does DevSecOps pipeline or the DevOps pipeline with security works in a company? So in this video, I'm going to go over how a typical DevSecOps pipeline would look like in an enterprise or in a mid-sized company. I'm going to go over the pipeline itself. How does it work? The planning, development, and the CA process. In the second part of the video, I'll go over the continuous delivery or deployment and how security would fit into that part. So while I'm discussing the whole DevSecOps pipeline, I'll be emphasizing some keywords and some important security tools that are part of the pipeline, which might be useful for you to write it down somewhere when you are preparing for an interview. With that, let's get into the content. So in a large company or an enterprise company, you have multiple applications like 3000 plus applications or 4000 plus applications and multiple business units and multiple tools they might be using some multiple tools or they might be having a consolidated set of tools for the whole company so usually what happens is you have a security portfolio that oversees the important security tools that a company have to use the security team will shortlist some tools in the market and then the application teams would use those tools to implement the security as part of their end-to-end -end deployment process. So typically in your DevOps pipeline, as you all know, you have different tools that play an important role while deploying the code right from your IDE till the production environment. And more often, most of the people would ignore the security aspect of the DevOps. So that's why this term DevSecOps was coined because security is also an important part of this whole DevOps process. Now, I highly recommend watching my previous video on the DevSecOps where I have explained different terminologies like SAST and DAST. I'll also go over those tools here, but it's better that you watch that video and come back to this video again. For those who are new to DevOps, I also have covered a lot of DevOps terminologies and different things in DevOps in my DevOps playlist. But typically, any SDLC process will always start with uh, planning. So in planning, what happens generally is that, so you have the developers, you have the operations people, and now you also have the security people who are part of this planning. So in the planning discussions or in the design discussions, while the developers along with the architects will have understanding of what has to be implemented, you have the operations team also as part of the discussions who will know what infrastructure has to be created or what things have to be automated from their end to get this you know, code ready or to get this feature ready uh, to be available for the production. And then, and most importantly, the sec team will focus on the important considerations that have to be done as part of this whole design. Let's say there are four services that are going to be released, four microservices. Now security team will advise them on encryptions or, or ask them the questions around how does the services interact between each other, what kind of authentication or authorization are they going to use, OAuth based authentication. And there are multiple things that security team will recommend or suggest or understand as part of this discussion. And there are many companies who do not include security team, but mostly you will see that going forward, this will be an important role during these discussions. And typically these discussions happen over some tools. And uh, some of those tools are Jira is one famous tool that is used often during these discussions to create the stories or to create a simple Kanban board called Kanban board or to create a simple scrum board where you can use Agile and all, all other stuff. So during this process, teams will use these tools to collaborate between each other. So now let's say if, if a, a feature has to go to production, so there will be a, a story that is going to be created, which might be part of an epic. And then the story will have what functionality that is going by when. Let's say it has to go by end of this month. Now in this functionality, you will have subtasks that would be created in Jira. So one subtask would be for dev. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare is a platform where you get access to lots and lots of courses and you can pick your specific skill that you want to develop in 2022. I personally use Skillshare to watch this amazing course about YouTube success script and shoot by the legendary MKBHD. It helped me to create better videos and get better at creating content. But if you are interested in DevOps, you can search for DevOps courses as well. So there are courses on DevOps, cloud, and, and most importantly, the first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And I think Skillshare can help you to make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and connection through creativity. So check it out, click on the link right away, and do not miss one month free subscription. And another subtask would be for QA. 
and third would be for ops person and the fourth subtask might be for sec so developer will do their tasks and then QA will look into their tasks and the operations will have some tasks that are associated with the story and then security team might also have one task but this is not generally created because security team will just give their advice here and most of the tools are there and you know they are automated so once the planning phase is done the developers will start writing the code for that functionality or for that feature that has to go to the production now at the development stage obviously we use IDEs so there are some quite famous IDEs that are used in the development phase. One such example is IntelliJ or, or Eclipse or Code. So now you might be having this doubt like where does security fit into the development or how does security play a role here? So when the developers are writing the code, Often, let's say a developer has written a code and he or she has forgotten to encrypt the password or they have put the password in the config files as a plain string, even without encrypting that with a base64. Now, when those things happen, you have different linting tools as part of the IDE itself. So they will catch that and then they will immediately advise the developer to fix that. Or let's say this process is skipped so then you will have these linting tools in GitLab as well or GitHub which are installed by the company so that they can find these vulnerabilities as early as possible or immediately advise the developers to fix that password or the basic uh, stuff the linting tools generally look into the code. Now in the development phase you must have seen this term called SAST. I also have explained this in my previous video. SAST is nothing but a static analysis of the code meaning it will go over the code. It has its own database to do a scan against the code. So for example, it might find the cross side scripting, you know, vulnerability, and uh, it might also find a SQL injection as, as an example, right? So that is one, or it might also find the encryption or such stuff that are usually caught as part of the static analysis. So main tools that are quite famous in the SAS category are Fortify. You know, there is, this is one tool and you also have sonar cube to an extent it does some basic quality analysis, static analysis. And then there is another tool called check marks. And there is one more tool, which is called black duck, which checks into the open source libraries that are used in the code and it will find the vulnerabilities in those libraries. So these are the tools that are used in the SAS scan. Now, most of these tools might have the plugins which are part of the IDE itself. Now let's say when you're writing the code, you can have the Fortify plugin. So that way it, it will incrementally find the vulnerabilities in your code. And similarly that happens with SonarCube or Checkmarks or Black Duck because in a DevSecOps, you want to shift your security to the left, meaning right from the development stage itself, you want to inform the developers to find the vulnerabilities as fast as they can before the code, before the code is going into production or before it is too late to catch those vulnerabilities. Most of the tools that you see in the market will have the plugins integrated as part of IDE so that the vulnerabilities can be caught immediately at the IDE stage itself. So once it is done, you would commit the code and then you would use, you know, GitLab as an example or uh, GitHub. During the commit, you would make a pull request. Somebody from your uh, team would approve the pull request. And during that process of the pull request also, when the pull request is created, you can automate some of these scannings as part of your Git CI process or Git continuous integration process. So this is also one common thing that is done in the company so that if something is skipped or missed in the IDE, it can be caught at the CI process level, which I'm going to cover in, in the next step. Now the Git branching, Different companies follow different ways of branching. So some companies use a trunk based development or some companies would create different branches for different releases like feature release and uh, you will have a development branch or a, or a production branch or main branch. So some companies will find that TDS to manage these branches. So that's why they'll follow the trunk based model. But again, that's subjective and I highly recommend you to go through Stack Overflow or some very good websites that will explain you what are the common branching strategies that are followed. 
and this is not uniform across the big companies because each application team generally follow their own principle and nobody is going to impose the application team as it is subjected to their release pattern now once we are done with the development and planning we are good that the code now is ready to go to a test environment or a staging environment or a prod environment now, what happens there is once the code is committed to git you have the ci tools that will play a major role here and that's why you see that you know jenkins is famous for this so what jenkins will do is it will take the code whatever that's been committed incrementally or the whole code however you define the build pipeline and the same applies to now the famous tools like gitlab ci or github actions that are getting more popular these days so these tools will also do the same thing so they take the code as soon as you commit and then as part of the pipeline you're going to integrate your security again there now if anything that got skipped in this whole development stage these tools will do a sast scan again here so let's say these tools will go will talk to fortify and then do an analysis or they might talk to you know, sonar cube or they might talk to even the check marks or black duck and then once any vulnerability is found during this step it would immediately break the build that is why it is called as build breakers because you would have to check the unit tests you would have to do the sas scan and find the vulnerabilities and then inform the developers about what happened exactly with the build because that's the whole part of the ci process how frequently you can give the developers the feedback that they need as soon as they commit the code also good companies follow strict enforcement on the unit testing so let's say the code has been committed and the sonar cube which is a tool that is used often to find the coverage of the code finds that the code has only 60% of the coverage let's say that and they have set 70% as a standard then it will immediately break the build and send it back to the developer saying that please fix the fix the code and then come back or or please write the unit test and you haven't covered for some of your code so please write that and come back and then commit again but in some companies this is also skipped but anyway so so build breaker is one important thing and the security scans like we have discussed the fortify scan the sonar cube scan any other sas scans tools that are available in the market so this is how the security is integrated or security is part of the design development process in your devsecops i hope you got good understanding of how security plays an important role in devsecops or in devops and in the next video i'm going to cover what happens in the cd process once everything is done here what happens next how security plays an important role there what are the some of the security things that are taken care in the cloud and the infrastructure and the other stuff that is taken care after the deployment if you like this video give it a like and share it with your friends who are looking to understand the devops process in enterprise company or in any company so that it will be very helpful for them to explain this whole process in interview thank you again for watching this video give it a like and do subscribe to my channel